chat at I'm a Celebrity South Africa, the podcast, with myself, former jungle queen Scarlett Moffat, and another iconic campmate from last year, comedian Sean Walsh. After each ITV <laughs> episode... <laughs> Am I Mr. Celebrity South Africa? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to give you a trumpet intro there, didn't I? Yeah. Apologies oh, for that. Come on. We'll be chatting through what we saw in camp, the friendships, fallout, and debating who was right or wrong with any long drop dramas. Plus, we've both been in there, so we can give you an insight to how it really feels when you're hungry and homesick and maybe even spilling some secrets. Ooh. And once a contestant leaves camp, we'll be giving them a right grilling and find out what they really made of the other campmates. Um, you weren't too faced in there, were you, Scarlett? You what did you think you 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 know you were as honest around the fire as you what are you laughing at? <laughs> Like, the fact you just asked, are you too pissed? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you if I am, am I? <laughs> we can look back retrospectively. You know, <laughs> do you think that you were the same person in the Bush Telegraph, as it was, as you were around the, the campfire? Yeah, I think I was, you know. I think, like, yeah. yeah, there wasn't really anyone that got on my nerves that much. Because you're just in there well, with just the camp, mate. It's like, I feel like you just instantly forget that there's life on the outside of your camp. Right, so you're absolutely right. This is something I've been thinking. We're going to talk about episode two, but just quickly before we do, because I think you've touched on something really interesting there, is I'm not sure how often you forget the cameras are there, but... There's a difference between knowing there's a camera there and remembering that millions of people are watching at home. That, yeah. that, that, I mean, I think that goes, that goes really quite quickly. Yeah, and that's the thing that, like, everyone always asks me. They always say, like, oh, like, how can, like, you know when some people, like, lose the temper with people or they can't do a, a trial or a challenge? And, like, everyone's like, but you know millions of people are watching and you're like, but you don't because you forget that and all of a sudden it's just you and and deck and then, like, I don't know, a kangaroo testicle. And, like, it's just you yes. there yeah. and it's like you've just... You're in your own mind. But also, I don't think that... And, and, you know, there might be... You know, maybe we'll talk to the legends when they come out and maybe they'll have a different take on it. But I personally... I think you would lose your mind if you were trying to be real to the people that you're in there with, that you're getting to know, that you kind of, you know, love in your own special way, like a family... To be try and maintain being real to them, but then also trying to think about what millions of people at home are thinking. I think that's one of the brilliant things about this podcast. Even if I do say so myself, and I'm being a big head, might be Go biased. But the fact yeah, that we do. get to interview the legends when they come out, like we oh, get to get all of wait. the inside gossip. I'm like buzzing about that, and we've ha already got three new celebs coming in. As if it wasn't good oh, enough. Oh, here that. we go. We had Gillian McKeith. Now we've got Georgia Toffolo, Toff. We've got Mylene Class and Andy Wyman. I feel like these are three more legends. We've got two runners up and a jungle queen. What more can you ask yes. for? Yes. I know this is exciting stuff. So now, not only is Phil Toffolo in there, a previous winner, we've got Georgia Toff Toffolo, two winners. It's busy. I don't know how Janice Dickinson is going to remember everyone's name and occupation. Do you, <laughs> she'll have no idea who they are, will she? No, absolutely not. Absolutely. No. <laughs> do you have, being the, the super fan that you are, do you think that with the series that have gone by, do you have any perhaps insight into how these three new entries will affect the camp? as soon as new people come in, it just completely changes the dynamics because very quickly you get into a routine, even if it's a day or so. Like, you've got the people who are cooking, the people who are doing the long drop, like, and you've already formed little cliques. You have people who you spend more time with. And as soon as newbies come in, that it's like school again. It's like starting big school all over again. You know, one of the things that happens, because obviously I was, I, you know, I was a late entry, it is that you you're in a way you're lucky because you skip the big kind of drop into the show you know like they had to do that big skydive didn't they in episode one 
Jordan and uh, Amir oh, and yeah, Carol Vaughan. Like, yeah, like, yeah, a- absolutely terrifying, absolutely mortifying. So, I, in, on one hand, I was lucky that I got to skip that. On on the other, you know, I think you you straight away you're put in a situation where you're now not on, on the in the same boat as everyone. Because, you, you know, they might have all sort of got a chemistry together and understanding of how one another operate in, in the camp. Have you ever been late to a party or a gathering or something like that? And it's really, I get really anxious. I get really nervous because you've now got to go in and where you would have had to say hello to one person, you've now got to go in and say like, hello to everyone. And it's almost like everyone is going to turn around and look at you. And that was my big fear going in was, you know, am I going to interrupt? They're all enjoying it. And I come in and I interrupt it. Definitely. I can imagine Carol Vardman getting on with Mylin class. I think they're actually already friends. So I feel like they already sort of know each other. And I feel like Helen and Toph will definitely get on. Sometimes I think when people are similar, it means that they might clash. But you think that Toph and... Uh, Helen will get on. Yeah, I think so. And I think Andy will just slot okay. right in. Like, he's so lovely. I think Phil and Sean and all them will just take him under the wing. I think they'll be like, come yes. with us, mate. Yeah. We'll look after you. Yeah. But I don't know who I would choose yeah. to do the trial because I feel like all three of them like are really strong. I think I would maybe go for Mylene. I think I would, I would choose her to to go in and do a trial and smash it for everyone, coming in a hero. Okay. Yes. Um, I think I would probably just, just simply because she won her jungle. I'm going to, I'm going to go with Toph. I think, I think that will be the one. It's just so exciting. Like you never get this, like, like, the fact that they're in the bush and like it's not just one newcomer now all of a sudden it's like was Gillian now it's three more like when is this going to end like how have they got the... that's yeah. why there's so much space like we kept thinking whoa they've got loads of space in camp there could be 20 of them by the end they, they could be having like bunk beds little bunk hammocks you've just mentioned the hammock there I just want to quickly talk about that because <laughs> Phil Phil curled up in that hammock Aww. his poor body I, I did you ever have to sleep in a hammock i do you know what my when i came out and then other people would be like i mean we're not meant to but it's like a secret i'm a celeb code if you're going in and you know the people that's already in you sort of like ask questions you don't directly say hey i'm going in the jungle but you, you might say what would you recommend a hammock or a bed <laughs> like you obviously know yeah. that, what they're yes. talking about but Vicky Pattinson gave yeah. me the best advice she won hers the year before and I was like I just want to make sure I sleep well because if I don't get a good sleep that's when I'm a little bit snappy and she was like get a hammock right. run for the hammock everyone thinks that the beds are the comfiest it's so straight and you got like a padded envelope for a cushion. So your sort of whole body's just rigid. Whereas the hammock, it just carefully caresses your spine. But obviously I was only 25 when I went in the jungle. I don't know how old Phil Tufnell is, but his spine, I don't think needs more curvature with a hammock. I, I couldn't disagree with what you said about the hammock more. <laughs> that is the most uncomfortable sleep I've ever, ever had. And I've slept on floors in my 20s. I felt like I was just in the womb, caressed, like I no. felt safe. Really? No, it's lies. Those pictures you get for <laughs> like postcards and like holiday pictures and there's a hammock there, lies. Absolute lies. It's torture. What about, um, what about uh, Sean's back though? The crack? That, I I actually was like, oh, what was that? I thought it was like something wrong with the mic. I thought like, oh, they got a little bit of technical glitch here. When he said it was his like hip or whatever, I was like, hon, oh, you no. get a medic in now because that that sounded painful. Ah! Oh, what? ah! oh, what's the matter, mate? Hip. What I heard that. Hold on. Are you all right, boy? Oh, oh man. Are you all right, son? 
what is he doing in there if his body's making those noises? The, literally, that it popped. I was expecting for the camera angle to change and just to see Sean Ryder in two pieces, like broken in half. That crack was unbelievable. Anyway, look, before I go off on a tangent about Phil and Sean's ageing bodies, <laughs> we've got to talk about uh, Gillian. And also, she, I mean, I, you probably remember this, smuggling salt in her knickers. Excuse Do you me. not remember this? Like, I feel like, yeah, this was like a big controversial thing, is that, yeah, she had little sachets of seasoning in her pants. And and obviously you can't have contraband in there, like. But I just think that was genius. <laughs> and as much as like I think it's wrong to break the rules, on that occasion I will let Gillian McKeith off because all you crave in there, like I can't explain, like rice and beans with no flavouring, like you're eating air. You're just eating for the sake of like yeah. doing something. Yes, that's it. Was it was absolutely just like putting solid nothing in your mouth, but uh, the whole basically the whole time, all of the rice, uh, even the food when there was vegetables, that just having no salt, you really could taste the difference. Salt in her knickers. That sounds. That, I, I think that would sound like quite a good song. Salt in her knickers. Do you know what's even more disgusting? I was actually thinking, like, how do we know that she hasn't done it again? And if I was in there with her, I would ask for some of that salt. I wouldn't even care where it's been or whose knickers it's been in. I would ask for some of that salt. That's how desperate you are, you, isn't there? Hang on, you wouldn't care whose nick. So if, if Sean Ryder pulled yeah. out some salt... From the from the back of his pants and just went here. Eh, do you want to do you want to splash? From his butt, I would have took it, Sean. I'd have been like sprinkle a bit of that on there, please, Sean. You're Not above that. All over that, <laughs> Sean Riders. <laughs> Boxes salt. Look at you. If I was in there, the thing I would most like to smuggle is pajamas. And I know that sounds really weird, but I really missed like having a change of clothes for bed. Like it felt weird being in the clothes that you're in in the day, also on a night time. And the fact that Sean and Phil said they haven't changed their underpants yet, I was like, I don't blame it. I think I literally. This might sound disgusting, but I worked out that I could wear one pair of pants for four days because I could wear it one way around, then the other way around, then inside out one way around and the other way around. Is, is that the longest you went? Four days? Um, yeah, like I pretty... Yeah. And the thing is, it's not smell vision Just stink. Who cares? <laughs> it's not just about smelling. It's if you don't wash for a couple of days... The f you feel, you feel <laughs> dirty. That is so strange to actually feel disgusting and go, I've got to jump into a freezing cool pond because I can feel that I'm dirty. That's how dirty you get in there. I, I like the feeling, Sean. Because <laughs> it was so oh, different. Fair enough. <laughs> It was so different to what I've experienced before. I think you've just got to you've just got to go for it. Go full bush. That's what I say. Go go full bush. That's Carol. what you say, is it? Go full bush. Get that on a t-shirt. That's what and... I love. That's what I loved it when. Go on, go on. No, Sean, we, uh, you know how you were a little bit dubious of whether Sean and Gillian were going to get on. Yes. That challenge. They, they both had the same shades on. They could have swapped heads. They looked like each other. It's getting to the point where they're that friendly with each other. They, they look the same. Do you know what it is? It's like Peter, Andre and Jordan all, all over again. It really is. It Here we go. Is. They're going to get married. <laughs> We're going to, they're going to be doing Eurovision together. They're going to be <laughs> singing the song from Aladdin. <laughs> Sean Ryder and Gillian McKeith. Oh, my God. No, it, but would you know what? Um, those two, I, I think it's really nice that they're they're getting on uh, and, they, you know, they're working on putting that behind them. But I tell you what, I tell you what that, that, that didn't um, didn't go over my head and I was, I was onto it straight away. Paul Burrell, right? Yeah. No wonder he was a butler because he loves stirring. Oh, do you want me to stir that tea? Oh. He was absolutely trying to stir it up. He's in there. Everyone's going, what's going on? he just sit down straight away. Oh, yes. Oh, they didn't get on. Oh, what's the yeah. problem? Did you not get on? Oh, yes, they didn't get on terribly. 
Oh, yeah, there's a bit of beef between the two of them. Oh, dear. Like, he, <laughs> he absolutely loves it. Keep, uh, keep your eye on Paul Burrell. He is a stirrer. What is that? So I, I like that you picked that up because I never even noticed that. So I feel like I'm excited now for the next episode to see if he does it again. But look, no, look, I've got a clip. Look, listen to him here, listen to him. Look at him stirring it up. Sean, Sean, I just want to know. Is she as mad as a box of frogs? Yeah. <laughs> Sean was saying he was in the jungle with Gillian. Oh. And he had a bit of a row with her. Mm. This is going to be an interesting journey. Yeah. So what was the challenge they did? What was the challenge? What was it? So lost connection, and it's where Jim yes. sort of had to match up the phone calls to the countries and make sure that yes. like. Oh, and what I, I couldn't have done that. No, now they, that that was a tedious game, right? I mean, we say challenge; it was like a game, wasn't it? And it's tedious, but those two actually are a great team because Sean doesn't want to do anything. He was like, "Look, I'll just untangle these," which was the hard part. Yeah. And and I think oh. because he had so many stories, it made it not tedious and Gillian could be in control, she could crack on doing a job. And like he was just talking about how he like DJ'd for the cartels in Cuba, like dead casually and that. I know. It absolutely I do you know what it gave me an idea that I think ITV should do, which is a travel doc when Sean Ryder leaves the jungle, where we travel the world with Sean Ryder and he just tells us what he got up to in each country. It was also the fact that he couldn't actually really remember what the countries were called, but he had a story for everyone. Look at a map and go, I think it was there that I, that I did this. Yeah. <laughs> and the best one was... Really it may be with a bit of a town. He's got it with the globe. Yeah, it was so funny. And when he said, and this is what made me think, him and Gillian literally are each other, the two peas in a pod. Because when he went... Oh, what's that mad country called where all those little oh, yeah. uh, cartoon animals went? And she went, Madagascar? I never got that. But they're so in tune that all he said is, what's that mad little country where there was where the cartoon mad animals? Little country. <laughs> there was, imagine remembering, where'd you go on holiday? I can't really remember. You know that mad little country? <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Helen Flanagan getting the macadamia nut right. <laughs> did she know that? Did she say was it, did she say she looked up facts or something before she went in? Yeah, very wise. See, she's preparing. I feel like this already shows a different side to Helen. The fact that she's studying random facts. And and it came in it came in Andy. She was the she was the hero of the group. Yes, it's very wise doing that. Looking up fat. I mean, I wouldn't know where to start. Did you not do so anything to prepare, though? Because, like, I would keep eating runny what scotch about? eggs. Like, like, I would keep eating what? runny scotch eggs because I knew at some point I would have to do an eating trial. And that was the closest thing to a test of clay that I could think of. A test of clay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a nice word for it. A test of clay. <laughs> Oh. I like used to go into meet the local reptile shop and like look at all the tarantulas and the snakes and stuff like that, you know, to try and like get myself sort of accustomed to like reptiles and that. That it, do you know what? There was one that, it, I, that is very wise because about the week before I left the UK to go to Australia, there was a spider in my bedroom and. And Grace, my partner, was saying, like, you have to deal with this. Come on, you're going into the jungle. You've got to deal with this. And I couldn't do it. Oh, it maybe is going to give you a bit more confidence going in there. Yeah, no, thank you. No, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. No, I didn't do it. I was terrified. <laughs> and I was terrified when I was in there. And I, and I was terrified when I left. So there you go. I just was so I was just so proud of Helen because I just felt like that was a proper win for her because she said it with such conviction and and yes. she nearly doubted herself. Gillian was like, "Are you sure? Are you sure?" And she was like, and then she was like, "No, I am very sure actually." And then when they got it right, I literally like yeah. screamed at the telly. I was like, "Yes, go on, Helen! Like you're doing so well." Helen Flanagan knows her nuts. 
She really does. <laughs> she really does. So now we move on to the Bush banquet. This was the first eating trial. Now I didn't, I'm gutted. I was actually up for an eating trial, as in I would have taken that challenge upon myself uh, to do that trial, but I, I unfortunately never got one. Uh, this was the Bush banquet. Jordan and Janice had to get up. <laughs> yeah. We'll all do it together or not at all. What do you, what did you think? That was some bad gag reflexes. Yeah, the thing is, I have I have done an eating challenge. I did, sorry, I have done an eating trial. I did the Big Bush Bake Off with Carol Vorderman. Oh. And, yeah, um, yeah. and I just think, like, it's a hard one because the thing is, you actually, like, it is mind over matter. And poor Jordan yeah. just has a really bad gag reflex. And and I knew that about him because he used to struggle with eating the beans in the camp. So as soon as Ant and Dex said his name, I was like, oh, they might not be eating that much. But I thought, no, he's going to do it. Um, but, I, but the thing is, I felt a bit sorry for John because he, he kept getting all of the, like, gritty stuff, like the penises and all of that. And that's all very gritty Yes, he didn't like he didn't like the anus, but he could stomach the penis and vagina. Yeah, that he, that he went down quite easy, didn't it? Really, <laughs> <laughs> he was going. Please, sir, may I have some more by the end of it? <laughs> but, oh, like, no, but also, I, I do think it was a good thing when Janice sort of said, like, you know, when they had to sort of share the trial. I think that was really good. Like, it's ha disheartening for the camp that obviously they didn't get a lot of stars. But I think Jordan did yes. the right thing because there was no point in Jordan going through all of that eating, you know, bits and bobs of sticks and when Janice wasn't going to eat it at all because it, there was no point. They were never going to win the star. That is so close! <laughs> well done. Oh, the aftertaste. Oh! <coughs> What a taste of, Janice. Uh, it tastes like something that crawled out of a sewer. <sighs> that shows good solidarity between them. Um, he didn't get angry at her for kind of... Remember, she was <laughs> she just refused outright, mm. didn't she? Was it... I think it was lamb's balls. I, know she, I think she put the lamb's balls in her mouth, actually. Yeah, I think she did, actually. The, the, the thing is, the, eat, the eating challenges and the eating trials are always, like, the ones that people are excited about. And, and I just think it didn't disappoint. Like, And I just love the way that everyone on this series, like, it feels so different to being in Australia, like, because everyone's just bantering Ant and Deck. Everyone's just like, look, yes. we don't like, yes. yeah, like this is awful, like, and you're evil, and I like that they're they're bantering them back. It's good to see. There, there's a lot of there, there's a it kind of antidote come out, and then people end up just swearing at them. <laughs> no, I also, I think that's the first time I've ever heard Antidote swear. I, you, you might be right. I was like, oh! oh and then I and then I rewound it. So I was like, did they just swear there? And then and then I was like, they did. They said they said the at word. I know. I I, do, I don't like it. They're losing their innocence. <laughs> to deck. Behave. Well, that was fantastic, wasn't it, Scarlett? Looking at episode two, uh, and now we're looking forward to episode three. There's always so much to discuss. I'm so glad we're back tomorrow, as I need to find out when Phil and Sean will eventually wash their pants. Remember to subscribe. It's super simple, costs you nothing, and means you'll get all the gossip the moment it drops. And we also are super appreciative of any lovely comments you'd like to leave. Let us know what you think of current camp contestants and who you think will be the very first I'm a celebrity legend. Do you agree with me that it'll be Carol Vorderman or with Sean that it might be Sean Ryder?